Right, so a few years ago, there was a researcher called Carol Dweck who wanted to see how children coped with challenges. So she gave 10 year olds problems that were slightly too hard for them. Some of the students tried and failed to solve the problems. They felt their intelligence was being tested and they failed and they were absolutely devastated. But there were some students in the group who responded differently. They also tried and failed to solve the problems, but they said shockingly positive things like, I love a challenge or I was hoping this would be informative. Our friend Carol tells us that the difference between the two groups was all down to their mindset. And this is the book Mindset that we're gonna be talking about in this episode of Book Club, the series where we distill and discuss lessons from some of my favorite books. So if you're new to the channel and consider subscribing, lol. So the first key takeaway in the book is about the difference between the two mindsets that she calls the growth mindset and the fixed mindset. The fixed mindset is the idea that all of the abilities that we have, things like our intelligence, things like our ability to solve problems, these are all fundamentally innate and there's not a lot that we can do to change them. Whereas the growth mindset is more of a mindset that everything is a skill, everything can be learned, everything can be improved over time, whether that's our ability to solve problems or ability to public speak or ability to do whatever. Now, obviously with all this sort of stuff, there is an element of raw talent. Like there are just some people who are better at singing by default than I am. And that's like kind of annoying. But to be honest, having a growth mindset means that you accept that there is this thing called talent, but you also accept that there is a huge kind of room for improvement in almost anything that we put our minds to. And I remember explaining this like growth fixed mindset stuff to a friend of mine when I first read this book. And um, this was a friend who was struggling to put her hand up in like anatomy dissection sessions at med school to kind of volunteer an answer or ask a question because she was afraid that she was gonna look silly in front of the other people in the group. And she was afraid that the anatomy demonstrator or the teacher who was showing stuff to us would think that she was dumb. And then I kind of talked her through the growth mindset, fixed mindset stuff. And then she sort of rolled her eyes, be like, you know, this is all like, you know, BS mumbo jumbo and everything. But then, a few days later, um, she said to me that, hey, you know, I, I actually thought about what you said about the growth mindset thing. And that made me realize that actually, if I put my hand up and I get a question wrong, it's not the end of the world. I can just choose to see it as like a learning opportunity. And she tried it a few times in the anatomy class and shock horror, no one cared. Like there wasn't a single person in the group who thought she was dumb for answering a question wrong or for asking a question in class. And in fact, she learned a lot more by having more of a growth mindset approach to life. Key point number two that she talks about that I found really helpful is the idea of how much we value effort. Now, in society, and especially amongst people with a fixed mindset, there's this attitude that you should be able to do something without putting any effort into it. And that is the mark of like a true genius or someone who's pro or, or whatever. And so people often feel that if they're having to put effort into something, they are doing it wrong. And so you see this often a lot in schools and university and stuff where people will feel that, oh, I, you know, when I study for my exam, when I am trying to write an essay, when I'm trying to learn this, this language or learning to code, it feels so effortful. Therefore, I must be stupid. The fact that I'm working so hard to do this thing means I must not be very good at the thing and therefore I am dumb. That's generally the fixed mindset approach to life, which is obviously total BS. And what Carol Dweck tells us in Mindset, and she cites loads of evidence that shows that actually, Everything in life takes a large amount of effort. Even the geniuses, especially the geniuses, they were produ they were putting in so much effort that you just don't hear about or you don't see because it doesn't make for an interesting story. You know, Isaac Newton, Apple fell on his head, he discovered gravity, whatever. Like, you know, that's the, that's the story that we hear about, but there are a zillion other experiments that he tried to do. He tried to dabble with astrology. He did like so much stuff. And most of it is relegated to like the discard pile because it's only the successes that we actually care about. And so what she tries to encourage us in the book, which I think is very good, is to reframe the idea of effort. Putting in effort is not a bad thing. We have to put in effort to get any kind of result. And especially when it comes to things like learning and studying, the more effort we're putting into it, the more our brains are having to work, the more likely that information is to stick. It would be like going to the gym and saying, yeah, lifting weights should feel effortless. Well, if lifting weights feels effortless, then you're not gonna get any gains because it's only when you put effort into it and when it starts to get hard, that's when you get the stimulus for muscle growth. I had a really good illustration of this the other day. So I thought I was very growth mindset-y and I, you know, obviously value effort and all that kind of stuff. But I was having a chat with the marketing director of this big software company that I really like. And he was kind of, we were talking about some of the challenges around running a business and managing a team. And the thing that really surprised me by what he said is that like, I, I feel like I really struggle to have difficult conversations with my team members when it comes to things like, I don't know, salary and expectations and performance and stuff. And I thought that the marker for a good manager is someone who can have those conversations effortlessly. Like that was just my default way of thinking. And then I was speaking to this marketing director guy and I asked him, you know, what are his tips for having these sorts of difficult conversations? And he said, oh, you know, my tip is to spend about two or three hours preparing for each one and taking copious notes and figuring out exactly what you want to say, figuring out what they might say, figuring out what they want, and just like doing loads and loads of preparation. And that was really surprising for me because it was like, damn, you know, this guy with, with 10 years of experience, 
he's putting an effort to, pre to prepare for these conversations. And I realized that I'd been approaching it with a kind of fixed mindset. And in a way I was thinking that I wasn't a good manager because this thing did not come to me effortlessly. When in fact, the answer is I was not a good manager because I didn't put effort into the thing. All right, key point number three is all about seeing the opportunity in failure. Again, this is one of those standard things that's become such a, a, a common part of mainstream self-help advice that obviously if you fail at something, then you should see it as a learning opportunity rather than seeing it as failure. I think this is all well and good. Like when I fail at something, if I don't know, a girl rejects me or if like a video does badly or if we launch a product and it doesn't do so well, that still feels pretty bad even though in my head, like logically, I have like the symphony of voices telling me to reframe failure as opportunity, all that fun stuff. But it is always a useful thing to remember that that is a thing. And yes, I've failed at lots of things over the years. I've got a video over there that talks about all the various different ways I've failed at various different things. But I've always, always, always been happy that I failed at those things in the long run. And so now if I have, you know, stuff that doesn't do so well, I do try my best to convince myself that actually, you know, you know, this is a learning opportunity. What is the lesson I can learn from this? And I found that like keeping a journal, I like to journal in the journaling app in day one. It's very good, link in the video description if you wanna check it out. I find that keeping a journal of that does actually help because then if I do fail at something, I think, okay, what can I do next time? And once I've figured out what lessons I'm gonna take away from the failure, uh, it, it's become a learning opportunity. And then I find that I dwell on the failure a lot less than I would if I don't do the reflection exercise. Key point number four is the idea that progress beats perfection. And I think this is really nice. Like whenever we're starting anything, like especially if you've had any amount of success in the past, it's very easy to develop this sort of disease of perfectionism that this next thing that I do has to be good. And I see it a lot with students of the Part-Time YouTuber Academy, which is the online course that I'm running. We're in the, in the, in the middle of the third cohort at the moment uh, and it's going pretty well. We get a lot of students who have been like really successful running their own businesses or really successful in their corporate jobs or whatever, who are then deciding to start YouTube channels or to take their YouTube channels more seriously. And a huge majority of them suffer from this disease of perfectionism that, you know, I am, I am objectively good at this other aspect of my life, like my work or my business. Therefore, I want to be objectively good at this YouTube thing. And it's so hard to make any progress if you've got this attitude of wanting things to actually be good or to actually be actually be perfect. And, you know, given the amount of different skills it takes to make a decent YouTube video and to run a successful YouTube channel and all that stuff, I think it's basically impossible to succeed at it if you have this idea that you want your videos to actually be good at the start. And so the thing we always tell our students is that focus on the quantity to begin with, focus on making progress, focus on putting out one video a week, two videos a week. And after you've made 50 to 100 videos, at that point, you can start worrying about making those videos good because quantity leads to quality and progress is more important than perfection. By the way, if you enjoy getting distillations and summaries and highlights of nonfiction books and not having to read them yourself, you should check out short form. Short form is my favorite way of reading summaries of books. Uh, it's not a replacement for reading the books themselves, but usually I've, I will either read a book first and then read the summary afterwards or read the summary first. And if I like the summary, then I'll read the book. Uh, it's really good. They're not sponsoring the video, but there is an affiliate link in the video description if you want to check it out. It's like $9 a month and it's totally worth it because you can get all of the insights from the book summarized so that you can read those in like a fraction of the time it will take you to read the book. And then you can decide if you actually want to read the book. I would recommend the book. The book is pretty solid as well. I'll put an Amazon link in the video description. And finally, key point number five that I've taken away from the book is that the whole growth mindset thing is a gradual journey. It's not something that will just happen overnight. I still think I have a fixed mindset in some areas of my life. Um, you know, this, this thing about being a manager, this thing about being a leader. I probably have a little bit more of a fixed mindset in my in my life when it comes to things like relationships and health and, and stuff like that. It's stuff that I'm working on. I think I'm pretty good at having a growth mindset in like stuff related to the business or content or coding or, or the other various things. I do music as well. Um, but I do still have a fixed mindset in some, some aspects. But she talks in the book about how this is all really an ongoing journey. It's a gradual journey of discovery and we shouldn't beat ourselves up too much if we can't switch overnight from fixed mindset through to growth mindset in every different area of life. If you like the video and you wanna embrace the idea of a growth mindset even further, you should definitely check out this video over here, which is a recent video I've done about how to learn anything faster. That is kind of about how we can apply the growth mindset and apply kind of principle to, principles, tools, and hacks from all the scientific research around how to learn faster so that we can learn stuff better and we can growth mindset our way to, to infinity and beyond or something like that. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Hit the subscribe button if you aren't already, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.